Hand over the pictures, you bastard. Now! Otherwise, you're gonna be dead meat. Hear me? Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. Now, as you know, I like to do my performance reviews of titles that I'm interested in to see if they're worth picking up. Unfortunately, the next game we're about to look at is Black Sad, an adventure title which looks to take a lot of inspiration from Telltale games. But unfortunately, very quickly, in terms of the performance, well, this case closed. Why? Let's find out. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a Telltale style adventure, you'll know that you control your character from a third person perspective. In Black Sad, it's no different. However, immediately, you'll notice something slightly strange. Not only does your character move at a very slow rate, but there are no buttons to increase that speed. There's no quick walk and there's no run. Now, while this on its own wouldn't be a huge issue, it is a slight irritation, no doubt. The frame rate is running between 20 and 30 frames per second, and the movement is tied to that frame rate. So you'll notice when it dips, your character seems to almost move in slow motion. The world around you could look really nice, but unfortunately it loads in very slowly. It's particularly noticeable in handheld mode, where entire walls of texture will gradually load in around you, and it's very jarring indeed. There was even one moment where a sign hadn't loaded its texture for a good 15 seconds after I entered an area, and I was left just waiting for it to render before I realised where I was. Walking around, your character will jitter and jolt as he moves, as if frames of his animation are missing, and unfortunately again they opted to use a 3D menu system whereby it has to obviously load the environment of the menu every time you open it, therefore creating a wait just to get into your menu screen and much of your investigative gameplay takes place within menus. You can enter Black Sad's mind to look at different clues and piece together different pieces of the puzzle, but once again, unfortunately, there seems to be an issue. The resolution of the title is very low. So low, in fact, that I struggled with my old man eyes to see the writing of the clues. I had to squint at the screen to make out the lettering as they are so pixelated and the aliasing around the edges of all the letters makes it very difficult to read. Now again, the character models themselves would be very nice, but these suffer from the same issues that I mentioned on the textured walls and surfaces. Sometimes they will just seem to downsample in quality as you move around the world, and when entering a cutscene, it may take a while for their textures to load onto their character. In Docked, it really isn't any better. All the issues are there that I've mentioned already, and just a few strange quirks. For example, when you're investigating a case in the game, sometimes you can enter a focus mode whereby you look for different clues in the environment around you. On the left of the screen, you'll see three icons representing the different senses. However, these are so small, and when you're in docked mode particularly, you just can't see them. I had to literally put my face an inch from the screen to work out what each of these was. And once again, it just feels like a touch of polish wouldn't have gone amiss by either blowing these up in size or even just labelling them. For all its faults and flaws visually, the story of Black Sad so far has been quite intriguing, but I just haven't been able to fully engage. It really is messy at this point in time. There are quick time events as well, and it's as if your inputs are delayed when you're trying to do these, and again, I would put that down to the poor performance. It feels like the whole game's been dunked in syrup. Press a button and wait a good three to five seconds before something happens. Move the stick and there's a delay before the on-screen character moves. It's a real shame to me as Black Sad looked very intriguing. As we've seen with other games recently like Pine, I'm thinking perhaps they just rush this one out the door to get it out in time for Christmas. I'm sure the developer will patch it up and as and when they do then, it deserves a full review because the core game underneath all the mess isn't bad. But at least on the Nintendo switch i wouldn't say pick this one up as for the controls well i mentioned those already you move with the left stick there are no specific nintendo switch controls you won't find yourself swiping a joy con around the screen with motion or gyro but the lack of any run button as mentioned is a real pain and the strange way you transition screens you have to walk off the edge of a screen and then there's a loading bar before it will then begin the actual loading process to get you to the next it's just odd very strange in terms of the audio of the game it is absolutely excellent there's no doubt about it the soundtrack is perfect for the new york setting and the jazz music in the background just fits everything nicely
The character voices are all good. Again, they're a bit stunted at times, but that's not to do with the performance. That's just the voice actors. Private Eye. I work for Sonia Dunn. Where the performance affects the sound though, is when everything slows down to a crawl and the on-screen characters lose lip sync. And all of a sudden it's like you're in a old Bruce Lee Kung Fu movie. It really does lose track of everything. And once again, you are reminded that the polish has not been applied. So the first woman to run a boxing gym. I can tell you that the still images on the eShop absolutely are not from the Nintendo Switch version, but at least they didn't put a trailer on from another platform. As for file size, it's absolutely massive. The game comes in at around about 21 or 22 gigabytes, which is understandable with all the characters' voice acting, but really, when you put it side by side with something like The Tourist, which yeah, it doesn't have voice acting, but my word, it looks amazing and runs at 60 frames per second and comes in at under 300 megabytes, well, it's a little bit embarrassing to be honest. I really like what publisher Microids do and I hope they spend the time on the game. And I guarantee if they do, I'll give it a full review based on the entire game. But as it stands right now, it's borderline unplayable and unfortunately I could not recommend it. If you have any other questions, then pop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. A big thanks to our patrons who support the channel each and every month. And as always, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya. Well, I might be blind as a bad but as you can certainly see I have two wonderful functions